Hello, my name is Dr. Perry Meyer, and I'm the medical director at the Meyer Institute here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We are a center for advanced diabetic foot and wound care. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about diabetes as a malignant disease, and that might be a term that you haven't heard before, but one that is, um, we feel, is, is very important and describes diabetes very accurately. When diabetics first get the diagnosis of diabetes, we wonder what is it that they're thinking about? Now, they often will think about sugar, and that's very common. They also will be probably thinking about the food that they're eating and the bad food in particular that they've eaten. Weight will certainly be discussed uh, with their doctor and if, if they're overweight they're going to be asked to lose it. Some people might think of heart attacks or strokes as it's associated with diabetes. Others who are more informed might also think about diabetic blindness or diabetic retinopathy. Others still might know people who have gone on to kidney failure as a result of diabetes and, and are on dialysis. Others still might know some people who have had diabetic foot ulcers. And others still might know people who have had a diabetic lower limb amputation. But it would be very uncommon for a diabetic when first diagnosed with diabetes to think about death. And that's where we're going to start off uh, the discussion. Diabetic man management uh, is a treatment really is based on lifestyle modification quite a bit and patient education. There's a lot of emphasis on medications, obviously. Visits to the family doctor and to various specialists in diabetic education centers, etc. are important and, and, and monitoring with labs are very important. All of these things feature very heavily in the current model of diabetic management, but unfortunately the outcomes haven't been so good. The diabetic rates in the U.S. have gone up from 6% in 1980 to 16% in 2006. Why is that? Well, it's because of obesity. And that's something that we haven't really tackled well. In February of this year, obesity overtook smoking as the number one preventable cause of cardiovascular disease. That's an unbelievable statistic. One in two Americans are obese, and if Canadians thought that we were better off or off the hook in this regard, we're not. One in four Canadians are obese. And what is the most shocking statistic of all is that one in three children are obese. And it's said that this generation will be the first one that will not outlive their parents, all a result of obesity-related diabetes. Less than 50% of all diabetics in Canada have their A1C, or their three-month check, at target under 7%. After 10 years of diabetes, this rate falls to less than 35%. So the conclusions are obvious. We must accept the fact that the current approach to patient education has failed dismally. And obviously we need to change our approach in addressing diabetes and its complications. So this is where we start to talk about the risk inherent in diabetes and its complications. We have not been successful in convincing or selling the message to our patients about changing their behavior. There exists a case for the use of the term malignant diabetes. We know already uh, there are terms such as malignant hypertension, malignant hyperthermia, and malignant otitis media, all describing serious forms of high blood pressure and hypothermia and, uh, and ear infections. And these are used to convey a sense of urgency in those diseases. Malignancy is a medical term used to describe a severe and progressively worsened disease. Metastatic disease is the spread of a disease from one organ or part to another non-adjacent organ or part. Now this aptly describes diabetes and its complications. So let's take a look at mortality and diabetic foot ulcerations. 
Mulek and his team in 2003 looked at 137 diabetic foot ulcer patients who either healed or did not heal and therefore went on to amputation. And he found the five-year mortality rate was 47% in those that did not heal or went on to amputation, but it was also very high in those that did heal at 43%. Armstrong, Robinson, and Bolton in 2007 undertook the same study, but with a much larger cohort, and found the same thing. 48% in uh, five-year mortality rate in the amputation group and 47% in the healed group. These are astonishingly bad statistics. Well, now we know what mortality rates look like in diabetic foot ulcerations. Well, let's look at how diabetic foot disease compares with other diabetic complications. This is important. We know that infected wounds in a diabetic will be the most common reason for hospital admission. It costs a fortune to treat. One in five leads to a lower limb amputation. And 85% of these amputations are preceded by an ulcer. If we look at the where diabetic foot disease ranks amongst all other complications, you can see that it's right up at the top of the heap, outpacing all other complications markedly. If you look down at the bottom, you see diabetic retinopathy or blindness and end-stage renal disease, very, very low incidence of complications there. And yet diabetic foot ulcerations or diabetic foot disease gets very little attention. Well now that we know what how it ranks amongst all other complications and what the mortality rate is in and of itself within diabetic foot ulcerations, let's take a look at how it compares to a disease that we all will know about and that's cancer. So when we look at cancer rates, uh, five-year mortality rates across the board, we look down at the, at the, at the lower, at the left, um, prostate cancer at 8%, breast cancer, a very serious disease, and one that's very um, frightening. Five-year mortality rate of 18%, along with Hodgkin's lymphoma at 18%. And now let's take a look at the diabetic foot-related mortality rates. Neuropathic ulcers and amputations have a mortality, five-year mortality rate equal to colon cancer. And if we move along to ischemic ulcers and peripheral arterial disease, which is very common in diabetics, the five-year mortality rates rise even uh, more at 55% and 64%. There are only two other cancers that outpace this mortality rate that being lung cancer and pancreatic cancer. So now we must use this information in a positive way to communicate the risk that is inherent um, in diabetics and use it to change behavior. Diabetes is a malignant and metastatic disease is the first message. We need to motivate patients into the same type of resolve to treat their diabetes that they would have for a diagnosis of cancer. We must be able to communicate effectively with our patients to not frighten them, but to empower them. The difference between these uh, mortality rates with diabetic foot disease and those of cancer is that the outcomes are modifiable for diabetic ulcer patients, namely their cholesterol, blood pressure, and weight are the factors that influence mortality because people do not die from diabetic foot ulcers. They die from heart attacks and strokes or macrovascular disease and the, the factors that influence that complication in diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, and weight or obesity. We need to be able to tell patients that they have control over their destiny. When was the last time you ever heard a patient say, I'm a four-year diabetic foot ulcer survivor? 
We want people to start talking in that way, but we have to be able to communicate the risk inherent in their disease and use that information to m modify their behavior and motivate them to change uh, their lifestyles and change the way they think. The basic model of care in any diabetic foot wound and wound center is screening patients um, at risk for neuropathy, vascular disease and deformity. Then assign a foot risk score to stratify them as far as their risk goes and provide timely and appropriate referrals. With this kind of basic care and structure plus communicating risk in a positive way that is intelligent and engages the patient to stimulate discussion between the clinician and the patient will ultimately lead to better outcomes and more people keeping their limbs on their bodies. Well this is Dr. Perry Meyer again thanking you for listening to another episode of Offload.